the next question from the brother. Morning, Mr. Zakir Naik. My name is Jamie Shlamani. First of all, I want to thank you for what you're doing here. I've really taken a, a, a lot away from here, I'm sure. Um, my question is on your point number three. Actually, I have three questions, if you could be so kind. But on point number three, first of all, I felt that you, it was very evasive, your, your answer. But what I'm going to ask you is very simple. When you talk about terrorism, when you talk about Islam, now this is a very simple, straightforward question. I hope I can get a straightforward answer. With what's happening in Pakistan, Iraq, Afghanistan, just to name a few, I'm not stereotyping, I hope no one takes offense. But when you hear on the news that a woman is cooking food for her kids and then a suicide bomber comes and kills them, I want to ask you a simple question. What is that? Is that Islam or is that people who don't understand what Islam is and they have their own perception of Islam? And please, let me ask you one more thing. Can you give me an answer that is not in World War I or something, there were more people that died or this is all propaganda and these are Americans killing people and that's yeah, your man answer, the, then you pass yeah, your comment, yeah. I want your to just that type of answer. Yeah. Your answer, then you can pass your comment. Huh? The brother asked the question that the years in Afghanistan and Pakistan, a woman cooking food, a suicide bomber comes and blows up and kills. As far as Islam, what the media is saying, forget about it. I'll give you ruling of Islam. Whether what the media says right or wrong, Quran says in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 32, if anyone kills any other human being, unless it be for murder or for spreading corruption in the land, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. Any person kills any other human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, unless it be for murder or for spreading corruption in the land, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. And if any human being saves other human being, it is as though he has saved the whole nation. So according to the Quran, killing any single innocent human being is prohibited. If a suicide bomber comes and kills a woman who's cooking she innocent, it is 100% prohibited, whether done in Pakistan or Afghanistan or America or Dubai. Is the answer clear? Okay. 100% wrong. Clear Whoever was doing it, Whoever was doing it, Whoever was doing it, whether namesake Muslim or American or propaganda, Whoever was doing it, it is totally prohibited. Mind, so is it clear answer? That is clear. 100% clear? 100%. Whether you do, anyone so does? wrong, yeah? 100% oh, wrong. It no. is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. There is no other scripture that I know of today. Okay. There is no other scripture that I know of today that gives this statement that if you kill one human being, it is as though you kill the whole human except the Quran. There is okay. no other scripture Perfect. that I know which says that if you say one human being, you have saved the whole of humanity. No other scripture. Perfect. Now, can I ask you something? Yes, you, you are told most me this is wrong, yeah? Hundred percent wrong. Fine, fine, fine. Now, why are you here? The way I look at it, all of these are innocent, loving people here. Why isn't this convention somewhere like Afghanistan and Pakistan trying to teach people that what they are doing is not Islam and is just some brainwashed chaos? And that they're going to go to hell and they're not going to go to heaven for killing innocent people, for the 911 attacks, for the London bombings. Innocent people died. If I don't like you and I kill you, it's more justified than if I don't like somebody, if I don't like Jews and I go and kill innocent Americans with families. Why don't you go and educate these people and have a better cause rather than converting four or five people here? Save thousands of lives. Brother has asked a very good question. He's telling me, why don't I go to Pakistan, to Afghanistan and spread this message and prevent this? Brother, I go every day, even now I'm going there. I'm on the satellite. We have Peace TV reaching 100 million people. This is how much? That's what I wanted to hear. This is 20, 30,000 people. The audience here will be 20, 30,000 people, not more than that. You see the recording. Why do we the recording? So that I can go to Pakistan, I can go to Afghanistan, I can go to even America and my lectures on jihad and terrorism, the maximum viewership, it has got more than 100 million people and it is meant for the full world. I'm giving here, it is being recorded, being telecast. The thing is, I cannot force anyone the point of the sort accept my message. Can I force you? Am I forcing you? Am I forcing you to accept my message? No, 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 you're not How can I force the people of Pakistan? How can I force the people of Afghanistan? At the same time, at the same time, at the same time, I also tell the innocent people being killed, I agree with you. What's the numbers? You said 
you know, four or five people converting here is better than telling that. My job is to deliver the message. Fazakrin naman tamazakrin. Mention in the Quran, Surah Ghasha, chapter 88, verse number 21, 22. Our job is to deliver the message. We can't convert hearts. Allah told the Prophet, you are not the manager of affairs. It is Allah who gives the hidayah. I can talk. I cannot convert. It is Almighty God who converts. I can talk. Whether they understand or not in Pakistan, it is Almighty God. Coming to a basic question. According to me, you should see my cassette. Is terrorism Muslim monopoly? Is terrorism Muslim monopoly? If you see that cassette, your mind, your vision of terrorism will improve. Time does not permit me to give a talk here again. But I'll tell you for sure. According to me, the terrorists are mainly the politicians. It is they who create this. You go anywhere. You know in India, all the riots that took place, indirectly or directly, it's the politician. Babri Masjid. Why did Babri Masjid riot take place? Why? Because the politicians. Gujarat riot. Politicians. What happened about 9-11? See my cassette. It was an inside job. According to 72 scientists of America, they say 9-11 cannot be done by 19 Arabs. It's impossible. It was an inside job. 72 scientists of America, not Dark and Night. Inside job. Who did it? George Bush. Okay, Afghanistan. Then what... Wait, let me complete my answer. Afghanistan. Thousands of people being killed. They are sending cluster bombs. Covered there. Thousands of people, you are talking about suicide bomb, that is haram. I am not condoning it, I am condemning it. But the bigger thing to be condemned is the Americans sending the fighters in Afghanistan, killing thousands of people, in Iraq, killing thousands of people. Saddam Hussein. I am not a fan of Saddam Hussein. He has done mistakes. The people of Iraq, they were fed up of Saddam Hussein. But after America came there, they are more fed up of the American than Saddam Hussein. That does not justify, just because Saddam Hussein was bad, that does not justify America to come and take over Iraq. Why are they doing it? For the money, for the oil. What is the main interest? Is the oil. Who created Taliban? When Russia came, the Americans supported the Afghans created Taliban. Now they want to take over, they are fighting back. Who is the creation? Americans. The biggest threat according to me in this history, George Bush. Now he's no longer there. George Bush, yeah, number one. I'm with one. you on that. Sorry? I'm with you on that. You're with me on that. So I'm also going to America. I'm even going to America live and on satellite, giving the message to Americans. I was the first person that I know of in the public after 9-11. In Australia, I said, I'm a fundamentalist, and I consider George Bush to be the biggest terrorist. This came at headlines. In December, in December 2001, when I gave a talk in Australia, when the Consul General asked me that what do you consider, who's a terrorist, I said George Bush number one. It came as headline, Dr. Zakir and I called themselves the fundamentalists and consider George Bush to be terrorist number one. Now, every Tom, Dick and Harry is calling him a terrorist. At that time, no one had the guts. What we realized, we are speaking the truth. Now, whether George Bush, you know, many people say, when I gave a talk in London on terrorism, very good talk, people enjoyed. A youngster comes and says, death to George Bush, death to George Bush. Full talk of mine gone. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there were two staunchest enemies of Islam. Both were called Umar, Umarain. The Prophet prayed to Allah that give hidayah to one of these two Umar, and Umar bin Khattab. Umar bin Khattab, who was the second guy of Islam, Allah gave Hidayah, who was the staunchest enemy of Islam, became the staunchest supporter. Therefore, I said, may Allah give Hidayah to George Bush. I cannot. I can speak. I cannot give Hidayah. I can tell him what he's doing is wrong. I don't want to kill him. I want him to accept Islam. Killing is useless. What's the use of killing? Accepting is better. So that's the reason we are giving the message. Those whose hearts are opening, they're accepting. Inshallah, God will open your heart also one day. So when God opens your heart one day, I cannot do it. I can give the message. I can't force you. Unless God gives you, unless you strive. If you strive, God will help you. If you don't strive, your heart will not be opened. Some people ask questions only for questioning. There is a question to ask. But the true gentleman, Marat ka bachcha, wo hai. When he gets the answer, he accepts it. You know, people just ask for questioning. My question is, you spoke very loudly. I am asking you, I gave a speech. I said so many things. Do you agree with that or not? 
Yes, I agree with it. Are you a Hindu? I'm actually your favorite. I'm an atheist. Atheist, That's Masha. That's what I heard you enjoy. You're atheist. You're my favorite. No, I'm not your friend, but I was told that you like having debates with such. Yes, yes, fame, atheist. Okay, brother, you're an atheist. Fine. I would like to congratulate you. You'd like to what? I would like to congratulate you. You know why? Why? The reason I congratulate you because all the others, you know, all the human beings are blindly following. Father is a Christian, so son is a Christian. His parents are Hindu, he's a Hindu. Many of the Muslim parents are Muslims. You are thinking. I don't know their father was atheist. Father was atheist? No. Ah, good. So you are thinking. These are the people they worship this almighty God who falls down and breaks. So you are thinking. And the reason I congratulate you is because you have said the first part of the Islamic Shahada, La ilaha, there is no God. You have already said half the kalma. But not the second part. They have said the full kalma. You are half Muslim now. It just means half kalma, you know, la ilaha. Only thing I have to do is illa Allah, but Allah, which I shall do, inshallah. I am congratulating you because you have agreed to the other people who believe in wrong gods. Jesus, Ram. First, I have to spend half my time in trying to convince them the God you are worshipping is wrong. You have already agreed there is no God. Only thing I have to do is prove to you about Allah, which I shall do, inshallah. Brother, suppose there's equipment which is bought. Equipment is bought in front of you. No one in the world has ever seen. No human being has seen is bought in front of you. And if I ask you the question, who is the first person who will be able to tell you the mechanism of that equipment? I've heard this speech and it's the creator. It's the creator, fine. So the creator of that equipment will be the first person who will be able to tell you the mechanism of that object. You may say creator, you may say manufacturer, you may say inventor, you may say maker, whatever it is somewhat similar. Now I'm asking you a question. How did this universe come into existence? How did this universe come into existence? You are going to now mention the Big Bang and all No, I'm that. asking you. Yeah. Don't tell me what I'm going to mention. Well, I want to know what, if, what is the... If you no, you are... See, I'm asking you according to your knowledge. No, the thing is, I've actually heard this speech before. I'm Fine. actually a good fan of yours, you know that. Marshall, you're a good fan. Good fan, theoretical or practical? If theoretical you're a practical fan, practical. you will follow. If I'm wrong, you correct me. If I'm right, you join me. No, I only learned about you about two weeks back, actually. Fine, so in two weeks, you became a great fan. Marshal, I'm very happy about it. In two weeks, you learn about me. That means you know. You know about the creation, the Big Bang, yes, which yes, we came yes, to know yes, recently. That, Quran yeah. mentioned 14 years ago in Surah Ambiya, chapter 21, verse number 30. Well, and I don't the, know the verses, but... Fine, but you know that. <laughs> yeah. Similarly, we did not know that the earth was spherical. We came to recently. Quran mentioned 14 years ago in Surah Nazia, chapter 7 yes, and verse number 30, it is spherical. We thought first the light of the moon is its own light. Quran mentions 14 years ago, the light of the moon is not its own light, reflected light, which we came to know recently. Who could have mentioned this? There's biology. There is water cycle, which you learned in school. There is embryology. There is genetics. My question is, who could have mentioned all these things in the Quran? So if you have heard this, you also know the answer. Who could have mentioned in the Quran? Same answer. The creator. The creator. This creator who has mentioned in the Quran, we call as Allah. So that means you believe in the creator. Who could have mentioned this in the Quran? The creator. The creator who created the human beings, the person who created all this universe. It can't be a human being who writes all this. So now do you believe in a creator? Well, there are different perspectives, you see, a person a has, you can we'll think about later on. science or you can think about God. Now the debate is which to follow. No, we can follow both. I believe but in as both. I, as I I'm said, a, I'm a student of science also, also I'm a believer in God, both. As, as my opening question stated, what I asked about terrorism, I believe you also know those are certain facts that Brother, we'll come to terrorism later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, brother, we are talking brother, about brother, that, brother, why wait, I don't brother, believe. Brother, wait, brother, wait. You asked me direct question, suicide bombing, killing innocent wrong, I gave direct answer. Now I am asking you a direct question, you give me a direct answer. You ask me, you are happy with my answer. No beating around the bush. I am asking you directly, when you believe in the creator, why don't you accept the creator? I am asking you directly. So you ask me direct question in front of 30,000 people, I give a direct answer. I am asking you a direct question. You didn't believe in God, I congratulate you. Now I prove to you that the creator wrote the Quran. Now I am asking the question, why don't you believe in the creator? 
I didn't say that I believe in the Creator. No, I you was said just the Creator. mimicking your speech. Oh, I didn't. I uh, brother, I didn't ask you to come here to mimic me, please. Did I ask you to come and mimic me? I asked you who wrote. You said Creator. I didn't say it. I say that. No, but that's even what in my you, speech, I don't what, say. That's what you said. Even I in didn't say. Speech. The questioner said. That means you haven't seen my speech correctly. Like how you are telling when I ask an atheist, he gives the reply, Creator, not I. Not I. That means I haven't seen my speech correctly. It is a person like you who I might have asked the question to, he gave the reply. Like how you gave the reply now. Did I ask you to mimic or did I ask you to give answer from your heart? So that means you are not a very truthful person. Nah? You asked me a question, brother. I gave answer directly from my heart. Correct? Yeah. I'm asking you a question. You gave the answer. Now you're saying that I'm mimicking. Okay, if I say the creator is what you want to hear. Now, not what if, I want to no, hear. No, no, no. Listen, hypothetically here. Not hypothetically. If, if we say that I agree to the creator. Now, what if I say that I agree to the creator of what was written? But I don't believe what was written justifies everything. You're giving me six facts. Correct, you're correct, correct. Me, very good, very good. You're wait, 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 wait. Six things, but there's a lot in life that's not written there. Fine, fine. There's Come, nothing wait, about wait, 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 wait. gravity or you're just telling me about light on the moon. Correct. Very the good, very good, good, very good. The brother says he believes in the creator, but everything is not there. Brother, this book, the Quran, is not a book of science. S-C-I-E-N-C-E. -E. It's a book of signs. S-I-G-N-S. It's a book of ayats. There are more than 6,000 signs, 6,000 ayats in the Quran, out of which more than a thousand speak about science. It's not a book of science. Two plus two is equal to four, that's not written there. But the beauty of it is, what is written, we did not know. You mean me, did not me, the creator wrote. If it had everything of science, it would be a voluminous book, as big as the World Trade Center. Or maybe Dubai Buruj. Dubai Buruj, you know? Tallest yeah. building now. It is not a book of science, brother. Please don't misunderstand. It is to prove to the scientist that this is the word of God. This is the word of creator. What do you have to tell me to disprove it? You have to take out a mistake in the Quran. Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse number 82, do they not consider the Quran with K? Had it been from anyone besides Allah, there would have been contradictions in it. There would have been mistakes in it. So for you to disprove the Quran to be the word of Allah, you have to take out mistakes. That's the reason I said, please come up and take out mistakes in the Quran. Why? If it's wrong, I will leave it. If it's right, you join me. It's a two-way, not one way. But uh, how old is the Quran? I don't exactly know. How the Quran is, is approximately 1400 years old. Okay, and how long have human beings existed in this planet? Human beings in millions of years. Millions of years. Uh, I'm not challenging you. Don't don't get this wrong. I've just no. I, I like people challenging you, me. What is I the like reason? people challenging me. Yeah. Okay, if you want to challenge, then I'll I'll take that step. Then. Okay. What is the reason that? Uh, first of all, is I believe Christianity is older than. Uh, Islam. It's, no, uh, no, you're wrong. Uh, you're wrong. Uh, Christianity is not older than uh, Islam. Uh, what's the difference? Islam is there since time immemorial, since man set foot on the earth. Okay. From the first human being, it's already there. Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger. He came 1400 years ago. He was the last messenger. Quran is the last revelation, not the first revelation. This is the last testament. Hmm. Otherwise, Islam is there since time immemorial. Isa alayhi salam, Jesus Christ was a Muslim according to the Quran. Abraham was a Muslim according to the Quran. Peace be upon them all. So Islam means peace acquired by submitting our will to Almighty God. It is there since time immemorial. Okay, so getting to the point, I asked you the time scale that the Quran has existed and the time scale of human beings. After you Not time scale that, of Quran. Islam is there since time immemorial. Yeah, no, no, of the Quran, the book, Quran. No, uh, the holy book. Uh, not not Islam. We can say Islam existed for forever. But why was the Quran invent uh, placed on earth afterwards? Very and, good. And, and very good. Very good. And uh, I also wanted to ask you something. I always wanted to know about that is the uh, Darwin's theory of evolution. Um, I know there's a lot of controversy on that. But why do you do you believe in evolution or you believe man was placed directly and the whole thing of apes? the science that has proved that human beings emanated from apes. Do you agree with Brothers that? Two questions that science... Two questions. Sorry about that. No problem. Two questions. Do you believe in Darwin's theory? Science has proved 
that human beings have been evaluated from ape. Do you believe in? Do you believe that human beings are placed? And second question, why was Quran revealed 14 years back? Why not before? Two questions. Regarding a correction in your question. Science hasn't proved that human beings have been evolved from ape. It is Darwin's theory, not Darwin's fact. It's a theory. There is no book today. There is no book today on the face of the earth which says the fact of evolution. It's theory. The fact of the origin of human beings. No, it's theory. And for your information, Darwin himself said that there were missing links in his theory. If you read his book on the origin of species, he writes in this on a ship by the name of HMS Beagle. He goes to an island by the name of Calatropis. And there he sees birds were pecking in niches, in holes. Based on the holes they pecked, the beak of the birds became short and long. Based on that observation, he propounded the theory of natural selection. He wrote a letter to his friend Thomas Thompson in 1861 that I have no proof for my theory of evolution, but because it helps me in giving replies to embryology, to genetics, that's the reason I'm propounding. He had no proof on it. That's the reason in our school, you know, to joke around, we used to say, if you were present at Darwin's time, Darwin would have been proved right. Trying to insinuate, I'm telling my colleague, he's a ape, he's a monkey. There were missing links. Furthermore, all the three stages today, science and advance, we have come to know that the first stage, the Australopithecus and the Iceman. The next stage that we have, Neanderthal man, Cro-Magnon. All these stages that we have today of the human being that we found, there's no link between them. Certain things what Darwin said, that life is evolved from water, I agree with it. Quran says that, Surah Ambiya chapter 21, verse number 30, Waja'alna min al kulla shayin hai. We have created every living thing from water, I believe in that. But saying that we have evolved from one species to the other is a hypothesis. According to molecular biologist P.P. Grasse, who held the chair in Paris University, he said it is letting your imagination run too wild to say that we have been evolved from apes. If that was true, today we'll find someone in between man and human being. You only find in Hindu scriptures Hanuman. You don't find anywhere in the world a monkey man. Do you find? So what? Do you think evolution has stopped now? It is a hypothesis. And most of the scientists today disagree with it. There is only a small negligible percentage which yet believe in Darwin's theory. Majority of the scientists have already disproved Darwin's theory. I feel your knowledge of science is not up to date, brother. But Dr. Naik. But not but wait. All right. You're asking me a question, I'm replying. Then we have to give chance to others. You have already asked five, six questions. No, Let's I do justice. Just having fun, that's all. Sorry? I thought you were being entertained with Having fun? Oh, I'm besides entertaining you, I want to entertain the other non-Muslim brothers. If all non-Muslim girls will come back to you. All so right. what we realize, Darwin's theory, brother, your knowledge on science is weak. We say Adam and Eve were the first human being. That's what the Quran says. Furthermore, regarding a second question. Okay. I have to answer your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have not answered the second question, you want to put the third question. That means you are not listening to me. Or you have forgotten you have asked two questions. No, no, I have asked you the first one. That means you are a good questioner, huh? Now you ask me the question, why was Quran revealed 1400 years back? Why not earlier? You know my son, he wants to become a doctor. He's telling me, Father, Abba, why do you want me to put in school and college? Why don't you put me in medical college directly? My son, first go to nursery, then go to pre-primary, then go to secondary school, then go to college, then go to medical college. I can't put him in medical college directly. Why? He should know the basics. Similarly, Almighty God is our creator. He kept on sending other revelations. When Almighty God, our creator, thought 1400 years back was the right time that human beings could absorb this message, he revealed it. He is our creator. He knows better than you and me. 1400 years back, he revealed his last message, the Quran, to the last and final messenger, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it's mentioned in the Quran in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 3. On this day, have I perfected my religion for you, the perfect form. And have completed my favor on you, you told the human beings. And has chosen for you Islam. After this, nothing new can be added into the basics of Islam. Nothing can be subtracted. That's it. So Almighty God knows when we can imbibe the message of the Quran. And this is the last testament, last messenger prophet Muhammad. No other messenger will come after this. Hope this answers your question. That and I hope that you even accept, besides being my fan, you also accept my teachings, inshallah. Maybe next time when you come here. Maybe next time. Maybe. You tell me I'll come again tomorrow. I'm flying tomorrow. I'll come back <laughs> fast for you alone.
Should we have the next?